have a lot of legal issues to unpack this morning. So, of course, that means I want to bring in NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalos to break it down for us. Danny, good morning. As always, thank you for being with us. And let's start right there with Governor Cuomo. How might these latest accusations, now we've got quite a big list here, against him affect the investigation that's already underway in the New York Attorney General's office? Well, in short, it'll make it worse for him because this investigation is going to involve talking, as I, we've talked about on this show, it, the uh, attorney general is going to be talking to a lot of folks. And by interviewing people, that's how they get threads to pull on the sweater and go from lead to lead to lead. And they may uncover more information, possibly even folks who may not want to come forward, but are brought out into the open by their colleagues who may have seen something inappropriate. That's how investigations like these proceed, and that's how they can go mm -hmm. forward. Uh, so that is something that the governor has to consider. And, Danny, now we just heard the governor say that he won't resign. Uh, what would an impeachment process even look like if that's the next route? It looks a lot like, in New York state, the two impeachments that we watched at the federal level over the last year and a half or so. Uh, essentially, there's an accusation brought, an articles of impeachment, uh, there's a trial. The only major procedural difference is that instead of a chief justice presiding, there's a, a mishmash of court of appeals judges in New York and, uh, and even legislators who are involved. So it's slightly different procedurally, but overall it looks a lot like federal impeachment that we have under the U.S. Constitution. Danny, I want to turn back now to Minneapolis, our other big story, where the trial of the man accused of killing George Floyd starts today. We know Derek Chauvin faces second-degree murder and manslaughter charges, but we're also learning the attorney general may try to reinstate a third-degree murder charge against him. So explain how that process works, what the difference is there, and how it might affect the trial. The trial starts today, but I say that with an asterisk because, number one, we're in times of COVID. And even I am one of the people who is in standby waiting for a jury on a trial because how are we going to pick juries in a time of COVID? A second, this is a high profile trial. Those always take longer procedurally because of all the security measures that have to be in place. And thirdly, it may be delayed because of a court of appeals in Minnesota decision uh, requiring the, the trial judge to reconsider his dismissal of the third degree murder charge. And that is essentially the reckless, depraved heart murder. Previously, the trial judge held that uh, depraved heart murder would not work in this case because you have to endanger someone else besides the person who was killed. In this case, there's no question that the only person endangered was George Floyd. So this is something that is a tricky issue of law, and the trial court has to reconsider it now, which could delay the trial even further. Danny, there will be much more to talk about throughout the coming weeks. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you again soon. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.